All right, this one is super quick, and I call it the teacher sanity saber. If you have had a conversation with students several times about misusing the internet or misusing the camera, and you are at the end of your rope, and you feel like there needs to be a pretty strong consequence for that student without completely removing their device or their instruction from them, you can use something called restrictions. And this, I think, is a great go-to when you are really frustrated, but you still want your student using that eye iPad for instruction. So we're going to do something similar to what we did in the guided access video. If you haven't checked that one out yet, that's kind of a different set of tools that would be really, really valuable to any teacher with iPads in the classroom. This one works a little differently. We're going to start by going to settings right here. And um, I'm going to make sure that I'm on general again over on the left hand side. And under general, if I uh, scroll down just a bit, I see something toward the bottom called restrictions. I'm going to tap on restrictions. Now it's going to ask for a passcode and you would be setting this on the student's iPad. Only the student who was causing a consistent disruption or really needed some sort of um, third or fourth or very serious consequence for misusing the iPad and um, kind of having maybe inappropriate posts online or misusing the camera or the internet. So you are going to set a passcode that you and only you will remember. Your students are savvy, so 1234 and 1111, they will figure out. So make it something a little more complex than that. And don't let the students see that because that defeats the purpose. And so now what I can do is I can, on this student's iPad, simply turn off access to any particular um, one of these iPad components. So for example, I could simply turn off the internet for them. Now be careful, that's probably their number one research and learning tool, so we would only use this in a pretty extreme circumstance. You can also turn off access to their camera. Just be aware that if you do that, they won't be able to use the camera feature in apps like Pixie or Explain Everything either, which can be kind of motivating to them because that's sort of one of the fun or more interesting or more fun parts of using those apps. So you can turn the camera off. You can also, if we've enabled dictation for you and you're using that with your students but they're misusing it and they keep using it to waste time and just say silly things, you can turn that off right here as well. And if you feel like they've earned the privilege back or after a certain period of time you've agreed to let them try again, you can come back in the exact same way and turn either all restrictions off right here by disable restri restrictions or you can go back in and just turn on or turn back on one of those components that you've turned off. So for example, I'm going to try turning off Safari for this student. They were very mischievous, kept misusing the internet. I put all my warnings in place. I used my classroom systems like steps or phone calls home, things like that. And Safari is still a huge issue. So I'm going to turn Safari off for this student. And now I am going to go out to my home screen. And you'll notice where I had Safari before down here in my dock, it's simply gone. There's no longer access to it. And when I'm ready to give my student that privilege back, I can go back to settings. Uh, I'm in general, so I'm going to go back to restrictions. I get my passcode prompt again. Remember, you're doing all of this on the student's iPad. So I put in that top secret code. And now they've earned the privilege back, so I'm going to turn Safari back on. And now when I go back to my home screen, you see that Safari has reappeared. So that's how you use restrictions to help your students make some better choices. And as a consequence for negative uh, behavior or misuse of the app, um, but without taking the entire iPad away from them. So that's just kind of a tool that you can have in your back pocket. And if you haven't already checked it out, I would love it if you would check out our guided access tutorial as well because that's another thing that can really help save you a little bit of sanity and keep you allowing the students 